What is up guys, welcome back to the Brave Angler. Today we have a new toy to play with. Uh, this is a dual hand injector uh, so that you can do two colored laminates with bait making. So we're gonna go ahead and mix up some plastic and use this a little later on. But first, to kind of get y'all caught up, fortunately we haven't been able to get a video out to you guys. And that's mainly because we just had a lot of things go wrong over the last couple weeks. If you guys noticed in our last video, we had this weird stripe in the bottom right corner. That is actually due to there being a crack in our lens of our GoPro. So we actually had to go out and get a new GoPro, which we upgraded to the GoPro 11, which you are seeing this on now. That was the first thing. I went to go fishing and film with a couple of my cop buddies, uh, Nick Warrington and Houghton. The hubs on my boat trailer had actually exploded. So we had to go ahead and get that fixed. And then we went to film with Caroline and our key actually uh, twisted in the ignition. So we had to cut that fishing trip short as well. And it's just kind of been one thing after another, but I was able to go out with uh, my friend, Nick Warrington, who's also a cop at the same agency I'm at. And I actually made him um, some soft plastic jerk baits that because he's colorblind, like I wanted to make him some baits that he could see with the primary colors in it. I'll show you his PB bass that we were able to catch on that trip. And he actually liked it so much. He wanted us to make him some more for him to purchase. So we're, we'll start off with that. And then we'll kind of start playing with the dual hand injector. Let's go ahead and uh, get you guys in position to see uh, me mix the plastic and we'll get into this process. All right guys, so we're gonna start off mixing our plastic. Uh, the reason being is because this actually, the resin and the uh, plastisol actually separates. So you gotta remix it, otherwise your plastics are gonna come out super soft and not really, uh, be very hard to clean up and all that kind of stuff, but they won't be functional. So we'll go ahead and mix this and you'll, ki you'll kind of see the color change. guys so now we are going to measure out one cup of plastic this make sure it's tight for the kind of keep out as much moisture as we can unfortunately i live in florida so the humidity is insane here so keeping moisture out of that is just impossible all right guys so this is what uh, the plastisol looks like fully mixed. It's kind of got like a white milky kind of color to it. As you can see, there are some bubbles. Um, bubbles are kind of due to moisture getting into it as also as it uh, gets irritated. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pop this in the microwave. Uh, with my microwave, I use a 900 watt walmart cheapy I, I normally start off right at like two minutes and 30 seconds for my initial but we're gonna go ahead and do three minutes and while that is doing that we're gonna throw our mold into the toaster oven um to kind of preheat it all right guys so while we're waiting on this um some things that you're gonna want to have uh these are heat gloves uh these specific ones are mechanic um, for working on cars and stuff like that just because you're dealing with hot pyrex hot plastic you definitely want to take the precautions um, So that you uh, are taking the best safety precautions now this uh, trailer we have the window open We also have the door open. So there's a lot of ventilation here. Uh, I also have my uh, top parts open as well my top vents so Definitely make sure that if you're not doing it in a heavy ventilated area that you're using a respirator or something because some of the fumes from this plastic or plastisol is toxic. So definitely make sure you're taking the safety precautions and reading up on everything with the chemicals that you are using. Now for, for the warmonger color, what it basically is is a white, uh, a shimmer pearl uh, with blue highlight to kind of give it like a silvery look with gold, blue, and black flake. So we'll go ahead and grab all that stuff right now. Got our blue, our gold, our pearl powder, our blue highlight, and black flake. All right, guys. So the first round, go ahead and 
put this down here so you can see. All right, so to activate the resin, you want it to get up to about 350 degrees. So first, see that we don't have all that cooked yet. So we're just gonna mix it up a little bit. And then we're gonna throw her back into, throw her back in the microwave for probably about another minute just so we can make sure we uh, get it. But as you guys can see all the bubbles, that's all the moisture and uh, agitation. We're gonna get that out using the vacuum chamber here in a second. See now, that is a nice even consistency. All right, so go ahead and take the temperature, make sure we got it up to like I said before, 350 degrees, and we're sitting about 351. So that's good. So we'll go ahead and mix in our colors now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be using is this pearl powder. And we are just going to use about a half teaspoon. This is a quarter teaspoon right here. go that's it on that and like I said we're gonna kind of use this is uh, gonna be the blue highlight pearl powder and what's really cool is you can kind of see the effect I don't know if you'll be able to see the effect right there but basically as the light hits it just gives it a bluish color what kind of makes it look almost like a cobalt silver so just a quarter teaspoon of that Then we're going to do a half teaspoon of the blue. Actually, let's do a little bit more than that. Blue flake. black flake and then some gold go ahead and mix all this up now I know it seems like uh, I did a lot of stuff right there without really checking it um, this recipe I had already figured out like I said so it's pretty much already set in stone to set off everything we're just gonna put two drops of black hold on a second mix this up all right just two drops of black that in and what we're left with is this color right here and this is the warmonger like I said he's red green colorblind so all you can see is blue and yellow so the silver with the blue and yellow it's kind of what we're going for here. All right, so next, put it in our vacuum chamber. Now, I would suggest getting a bigger vacuum chamber than this. Um, it is a little bit extra. Um, I would say a three gallon, just so you have enough space to work. Okay, so now that we got pretty much all this stuff off the sides, um, from it almost overflowing, Go ahead and mix all that back in. And don't worry, if you make mistakes like this, you could always remelt it down. That's one of the nice things is, is if you make a mistake, you can, you're not wasting plastic or anything like that. You can always start back over. From here, we're gonna go ahead and zap it again for about a minute. Go ahead and 
gonna go get our molds while that's doing that. They should be at temperature now. All right, so we got our mold nice and hot. Now you can use clamps if your mold doesn't have uh, lock screws like this, um, but luckily mine does, so mix this up. See where we are at with temperature. But between 320 and 350 is what I like to inject at. I just get the best results. And it looks like it's going to be 342. So we're definitely within the range we want to be in. Alright, so we're going to take our hand injector, which this is basically just a giant aluminum syringe. We're going to put it down in here, pull this up. All right, come over here. All right, so we should be good to go. And like all these extra plastic pieces, you can just throw it back in with the mix. So that way you get all the full use of your plastic. All right, so let's see where we are at. There we go. And there it is, guys. Now, and we're just gonna throw these in some blanching water. Pull them off. And then, like I said, we're going to do a couple more runs because we only have one more mold. We want to give them quite a few. But yeah, and like I said, like uh, so this is uh, the Warmonger color. Like I said, it kind of has this nice silvery kind of look to it with uh, the yellow and blue. Because that's, like I said, the only primary colors he can see. Now we are on the dual injector. So we got our plastic measured out. Um, cup, we divided it in half. Um, my lieutenant actually wanted to buy some jerk baits off me as well. And he is a big fan of the gators. So we are going to make him some gator fan jerk baits. So we got some nice orange. And then we also got royal blue. Now we kind of want these to be a little oversaturated just because uh, you know, they are very vibrant and solid colors for the gators. So, start off with our blue. Yeah, that is looking pretty good. Get our orange moving around. Go ahead and put our blending block in place. Orientate these how we want them. All right, let's give this little thing a try. That made a mess. Probably should have looked at the blending block and did it that way, but we'll see what we got. Alright. That's not 
as bad as I was expecting. The top part is really good. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can get these out. Yeah, so, not as bad as I was expecting. Actually, it came out pretty decent. Alright guys, here are the two varieties that we made. We made the Warmonger for Nick Warrington. Um, like I said, he's colorblind, so we only use colors that he can see. And then for my lieutenant, who's a Gators fan, we kind of made him Gator-themed jerk baits. Came out really good. So, yeah. That's basically how I make jerk baits. Like I said, if you want more information on the ins and outs of uh, how to make soft plastics, I would definitely check out the World's Worst Fishing uh, YouTube channel. Everything that I do, I learn from him. Thank you so much, guys, for coming and checking this video out. Uh, we'll be going out fishing tomorrow to get another video to you guys, hopefully this week, uh, to make up for not putting out one last week. So if you haven't already, make sure you like, comment, unsubscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Now go catch a fish.